Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial of Quinn Intelligence. It is again about using a camera in 3D environment. Today I would like to talk about on how to rotate any object on demand in 3.js. I thought I gonna make this video as it was not easy for me to find appropriate information on how to outrotate an object using Quaternion. What do you get from this walkthrough and why a walkthrough at all? I know most of you guys out there do not want to see me coding. I also want to keep this tutorial as short as possible so you stay with me for the whole time. Also the GitHub link for the source code is in the description. I think many of you learn best looking at other people's source code. This is how the result looks like for the first part of the tutorial. We will start with a simple rotation on demand. I focus on the quaternion function only. So you should be familiar on how to set up a basic 3.js project. The object is rotated once spacebar is pressed. In the second part of the tutorial I take Simon's third person camera tutorial. Link is also in the description and extend it with auto rotation of the object. You will notice that the camera is always following the object correctly. Let's look at the scenery first. I made a Google landscape using GIS Blender. A link of the tutorial from CG Geek is attached. An HDRI file is loaded for the background. Information on how to do this is taken from the 3.js homepage examples. I also load a drone I made myself in Blender, not spending too much time for it. You can see that the rotors are turning. I now open the Blender files as I want to mention two things. First in the landscape, by the way it is from the south of Black Forest in Germany, two empty plane axes are available. One is the starting point of the object, the other one is the position the object should look at. We will see it in a minute for what this is used for. Second file is the drone. Not much to say about it, but as we want the rotors to rotate, we have to keep them as separate objects we will reference later in our JavaScript code. Now it is time to look into the code. We look at the simple example first. Like always in 3.js, you have to set up a render, a scene, some light, and the camera. And what I do next is loading an HDRI file. I got it from HDRI Heaven, which you probably know about of. I set some exposure to have some natural light. Then I load the uh, landscape. And what is important to see, it was exported from Blender as GLB. And you remember that we had a uh, empty plane axis start and look at target. So these ones are stored as a vector free into these variables. Similar is the drone. Here we load the drone and um, look for the uh, rotators object and store them into the array. The end of the um, init is the event listener where we wait for a key down and key up. This is our, these are actually uh, small functions where we just uh, wait for a space to be pressed and released. So now let's look at the render stuff, which is here. What we first do in the render is setting the, the drone to its position. This is done here. We just wait for the start position and look at target uh, vector freeze to be available. Once they're available, we set the drone to its position and rotate towards its target. When it's completed, we set the start position vector free to null, so this information is used that we have successfully passed this one. So, and what we also do is setting the info text with the information spacebar to rotate the object. And that's all here. And now we just wait for the spacebar to be pressed. So, first thing we want to be sure of is that it's not already rotating. If it's not, then we go into 
this routine and set up the radiant. It takes it from degree, this is a variable with 90 in it, and set up the axis with a vector 3 with y up. Okay, so, and with these two variables we create the factor. And the factor is actually used to calculate the end position from the original position. So, and this is done by multiply the original position by the factor and put it into the end potanian, which is actually also the end position. What we also do is storing the original position of the drone. So when we want to turn back, we have this information in the back quotanian. So now we are ready to rotate. And what we also do is uh, telling the system that it's not yet in the back turn. So this is pending and it's waiting for uh, the back turning. Yeah. Okay. And what we do is also unset the info text. So nothing to be seen there. Spacebar has no effect when it's pressed. Okay. So now we're in the rotate. And what it does is just rotating to the end quotation, which was uh, initialized on, on top there before. So and once the drone has reached the end quotation position or uh, values, then it checks if the, the turn back is pending or not. Here uh, it's pending. So what we do is wait for a while and then set the end quotation to the back quotation. And also uh, switch off, say, the turn back pending. So now when it comes here again, we have inside the end quotation the back quotation information. So it's just turning back. So also once this has completed, then the turn back is not pending anymore. So we can set the system back to idle. So that's all the magic here. It's not so much. It's uh, pretty easy. And yeah, I hope you, you, you got the point. So how to calculate a end position for rotation. I tried quaternion slurp as an alternative too. The challenge is that you don't know when the drone has found his final position. And also, it does not make a 90 degree turn fully. And on the way back, it does not reach the final position, say the original position, as you expect. So this is difficult to use in certain situations. If you guys out there know a solution for this, please let me know. I'm curious. So let's look at the third person camera solution now. Actually, it's uh, pretty similar when you look at the code from the simple one. By the way, my example is following the tutorial from Simon Dev called Simple Third Person Camera. The link is in the description. I just added the code from simple to the update function of basic camera controller. Also, you don't have to forget to load the drone and the landscape and the HRI in the corresponding section. I also skipped the logic for the HTML info text for the spacebar. Here you may press spacebar anytime. Yeah, that's all for today. Please have a look at the examples and you may even want to fly over the black forest. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for staying with me for the whole walkthrough and I hope you get something from it. As promised, a short tutorial. I come back with the next one when I struggle again with a topic where I feel like it is worth to make a short tutorial when I found the solution. Thank you and enjoy the day. Bye bye.